Greetings, brothers and sisters. So this is going to be a really big video. And my video on my other channel yesterday with um, the Today Show dropping like flies. You know, some days there's just more news. And so the news is more profound. And there's just lots of it. Like any one of these things I'm going to cover today. I'm going to start off with Tucker Carlson versus the establishment um, stuff to do with the January event. And then there's kind of a, a big interview with uh, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank with the, you know, the dummies on CNN Morning Show. Um, and then I want to get into this. It was like International or National Women's Day yesterday. And I got a, three clips from, you know, a, a trailer and um, uh, some other movie stuff. And then I want to talk more about that, right? And then there's Fetterman News, his wife. She becomes a story. So there's lots of things going on. Some senator talking about UFOs and, you know, things like this. So these are all big stories. And I'm not remembering everything. I just looked at it this morning. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of stuff today. So I want to start off with them going after Tucker Carlson and his response. And I'm going to do a narrative after I go through that. But the first part I want to say is this. You know, there's all this speculation about truth and what's the real story and, you know, liars, because it's hard to catch people in lies. It's harder than people think to catch them factually. You can know someone's lying without being able to prove it. But the way I know the January thing was a fraud or a fake is because the people in the media and the Democrats and the liberals, again, you know, and I'm not talking about the right wing being the good guys because they're not, right? You know, all you guys who are binary thinkers, this isn't your channel, right? This is not for binary thinkers. People who have to be, well, if you're not a Democrat, you got to be a Republican. No, that's not true. But in terms of the way the media and the Democrats and all these people presented the dopes that were involved in the January event and Trump himself, was there a bunch of incompetent, crazy losers? I mean, just, you know, laughable people. And yet they were also criminal masterminds capable of taking down the government. And you can't be both, right? Especially the way that they've covered Trump. That Trump is a, a bungling fool, but somehow he's also a mastermind. Right? You can't be both. You can't present him as some, you know, inept, horrible president and then as a mastermind. Same thing with the, with the right trying to present Jojo Magoo as some guy with dementia but also he's, you know, responsible for taking down the country, right? You can't be both. If you're, you're, if you're Don Knotts and you're a fool, you can't also be a criminal mastermind. Then the fool has to be an act, right? You can't be both a fool and, you know, brilliant, right? Like it's one of the two things. <laughs> you know, you can't be stupid and a genius. And so that's the way they've presented it. So we know it's fake because there's just no way, right? The narrative just doesn't add up. So let's start here with this guy. Okay, so this is Chuck Schumer. <laughs> uh, one Chuck Schumer, who looks like he should be somebody who was in The Princess Bride, like a character. Just a reminder, I'm Jake, not Chuck. When a guy's banging you, because if you can feel their body, uh, come on. 18 <laughs> points for Joker, only nugget in double <laughs> figures. 69-59, Golden State shooting 60. You take on the intelligence community. They have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. Back at you. Back at you. Back at you. In The Princess Bride, um, here he goes. Billions of Americans tuned in to one of the most shameful hours we have ever seen on cable television. Shame. You know, that when they, when they be sanctimonious, when they get all sanctimonious... They use things like shame and how dare you, all this stuff, right? That's um, you know, coming from politicians who are the worst people, right? Especially these national politicians. Uh, they're the worst people. Like, you know, so they, they don't get to be sanctimonious. They have ordered wars and have endorsed uh, the military industrial complex called suffering and corruption and all these things, right? So, you know, when they, whenever they stay up like this, I mean, you know, it's like totally bogus. It's going to be whatever they say next is going to be totally bogus. With contempt for the facts 
disregard of the risks, and knowing full well he was lying, lying to his audience. So there was video in there that was given from Kevin McCarthy. And we saw the QB shaman being escorted around like he was a VIP. And that's in contrast to the narrative that they've created here, right? And to call that line when you withheld all of the, he's seen these other clips, right? Where it appears that these guys were being led around the Capitol, which undermines the narrative of insurrection, right? And these dopes, these QB dopes that many of them couldn't even spell insurrection, you know, like in the way they've talked about Trump being a bungling idiot, like I said before. And so it undermines their narrative. So to say that by presenting video footage that has a different, you know, view is a different lens and a different, you know, I mean, you can edit anything. We know this from reality TV to make it look like something else. Right. And so, you know, the video footage that Tucker Carlson showed you made it look like not an insurrection and to call that dangerous. I mean, this is this guy, right? Fox News host Tucker Carlson ran a lengthy segment last night arguing the January 6th Capitol attack was not a violent insurrection. By diving deep into the waters of conspiracy and cherry picking. Conspiracy theory. I've talked about this, how they use that as a, a weapon. I mean, we've all talked about that, but I had you know, clips of these guys. From thousands of hours of security footage, Mr. Carlson told the bold faced lie that the Capitol attack, which we all saw with our own eyes. We saw part of it. We didn't see all of it, right? Like he's showing you things we didn't see, right, bro? <laughs> was somehow not an attack at all. He tried to argue it was nothing more than a peaceful sightseeing tour. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the, the hypocrisy? A nonviolent demonstration a perfectly fine and appropriate instance of people expressing their opinion. I, so many others who were here in the Capitol, and millions and millions of Americans are just furious with Tucker Carlson and... Yeah, are they? Are they furious? Kevin McCarthy. You don't look furious. Why? Kevin McCarthy gave him video that disputes your story? It disputes your story. Today, many of my staff were here at the Capitol on January 6th. Their lives were put in danger, as were the lives of many of my colleagues, as well as police, maintenance staff, reporters, countless others. Turn the page, bro. At one point, I was within 30 feet of the rioters. One of them, I was told, shouted out, let's get him. And they were talking about me. <laughs> when he said that, they were talking about me. They wanted to get me before my detail pulled me away, and we ran in the other direction. He ran. To say January 6th was not violent is a lie. A it's lie. a lie. It's a big lie. I pure and simple. Pure and simple. And I've never lied before. I'm a politician. I, I don't lie. I don't think I've ever seen a primetime cable news anchor manipulate his viewers the way Mr. Carlson did last night manipulating his viewers like you guys never do that there's no part of the government that's just involved in psychological operation and distorting reality like you guys never have ever done that as politicians and as the media you've never seen that happen before okay so i'm in the editing process and two things i want to point out he just admitted to it he just admitted that you can manipulate your audience by showing them selective cherry-picked video that by showing only the portions that support your argument, you can manipulate your audience. Because that's what he accused Tucker Carlson of doing. But clearly, they didn't show us the other footage. Why not? Why didn't you show us all the footage, Mr. Honest Guy, Mr. Mon Manipulator, right? You know, you've just admitted to doing what Tucker Carlson did. Because Tucker Carlson is showing you video footage that undermines your story. He's not showing the stuff that we've seen over and over again that supports your story. So that's what you're calling cherry picking. But aren't you both cherry picking then, right? Unless you show both sides of the story, unless you show some of the other aspects of the narrative where 
the police and whoever in there are leading people around and letting them in and these things, then you're you know, being fundamentally dishonest, right? The other thing is, he said, his story isn't supported by the facts. And this is, you know, again, this is remedial truth or stuff, but the facts are determined by the people that control the system. The people say these are the facts, the government, the intelligence community, the news media. They're not real facts. They're the facts that you guys say are the facts, right? Which is, you know, the whole reason why there's even a truth community. I mean, again, this is remedial stuff, but I just thought I'd point it out here. I don't think I've ever seen an anchor treat the American people and American democracy with such disdain. He put his hands in his pockets, you know, is that? And he's going to come back tonight with another segment. Fox News should tell him not to. Fox News, Rupert Murdoch, tell Carlson not to run a second segment of lies. You know it's a lie. You've admitted it's a lie. All right, so this is him calling for open censorship. Because, you know, whatever Tucker Carlson's analysis of what we saw was, like that's anybody can analyze something and call it whatever you want to call it, right? You can name something. And you can call it this, you can call it that, right? You can call it insurrection, you can call it a peaceful gathering. That's your assessment. But the video footage itself is what we judge as people. And if we don't have access to different parts of the video, like if you're going to talk about the QB shaman, who's an absolute joke, you know, the QB shaman is just a clown, a puppet. And if you're going to talk about that guy and throw him into jail and you see him being escorted in by the police and not arrested, I mean, there's nine police people, nine police men and women there. And, you know, you saw the video clip. And so that, you know, has a different story. And again, I'm not a Republican. I don't, I'm not a Trumper. You know, I have a complete different view than most truthers, most people listen to this thing. And I don't really care. But this guy's calling for open censorship, right? I mean, that's what he's doing. Okay, I'm editing again. And, you know, there's so much I could say here and so much you could say. Like, like there's just, he's so dripping with deception here. He's so unlikable. He just out. He's one of those people that you know. He's probably top three hardest people to listen to in politics. Just who he is as a person. Like you, you want to run away from him as soon as like he's just Krampus or something. He's like <laughs> he's like Krampus over there. But him saying, you know, not to air this and manipulating his audience and disrespecting his audience. He's saying his audience doesn't have the ability to decipher and understand truth from from fiction. So he's again admitting to this elitist idea, which is true because there's so many dopes out there, you just have to go to Walmart and see them. But he's admitting that all these people are sheeple that can be manipulated by one side of the story and all these things, right? And that they have control of the narrative and it's dangerous if you try to undermine that control. I mean, he's saying that people can't make up their own minds and they have to be, you know, told what to believe. And that Tucker Carlson is telling them something that's destructive to the system, the beast, right? And so he's admitting to all of it right here. He's admitting everything he's accusing Tucker Carlson and the right of doing, but it was really Tucker Carlson because uh, you'll see the right-wing politicians say the same thing, that it's a lack of control, right? That you can't, you know, the worst thing you can do is go against the official story. Like, that's being said over and over again. And Speaker McCarthy is every bit as culpable as Mr. Carlson. Okay, this guy's just so hard to watch. But let's move on to the next guy. So that was the Democratic leader, right? And here's the Republican leader, uh, this human turtle. It was a mistake, in my view, for... Fox News to depict this in a way that's completely at variance with what our chief law enforcement official here at the Capitol thinks. Okay, so that is a weird thing to say on lots of levels. Of course, this guy's just another shell, and Tucker Carlson goes after him a little bit. But, you know, again, this wasn't proven in the court of law. There wasn't some, you know, people being convicted of insurrection. There were people being convicted of one crime or another, but no one being 
commit, uh, convicted of insurrection. So it isn't a fact that it was an insurrection. It's an opinion. It's a way to describe something, right? And, you know, the way that QBs, we know the QBs, Pierre, they're not capable of such things, right? I mean, they're lucky if they could tie their shoes. What do the great minds at The View have to say about this? For Fox News to depict this in a way that's completely at variance with what our chief law enforcement official here at the Capitol thinks. Well, you- she said the same thing. That's weird. And she's reading it like it, it's like some prepared talking point that they're saying that the chief law enforcement officer at the Capitol and Tucker Carlson have different views. And Tucker Carlson must be a horrible person because he doesn't read. Uh, he doesn't agree with the cops. Now, this is a woman of color that's often talking about police abuse, right? Whoopi Goldberg as well. Black Lives Matter and police abuse. But now Tucker Carlson's a jerk because he doesn't agree with the cops. You know, <laughs> the, the chief cop. So, you got Mitch McConnell saying Then you, you know really you're screwed. Yeah. So I, I'm yeah. really concerned. Oh, she's reading Mitch McConnell. Concerned about not so much Fox News and Tucker because we know. You're really screwed. Look at how happy Joy got. He's a liar. The judge found that. Wait, do you mean he's been convicted of lying? Right? The judge found that? What does that even mean? The judge never told a lie? Everybody's lied. I don't think there's anybody on this planet. There may be, but not anybody in the public eye. No one in America that's on television has told the truth. Even if they didn't even know they're lying, they've repeated other lies that they were told by their parents or whatever it is, right? Because human beings are incapable of seeing the full truth. And so there are things that are, you know, fundamentally dishonest about the reality we live in. The sky isn't blue. The sky is reflecting blue light, right? It's absorbing all the other colors and reflecting blue back. So all the things that we see, we think something's green, we think something's yellow. It's just the absence of yellow, right? It's absorbing all the other colors. And so that's a lie. And we think, you know, we see it. I mean, so everything's a deception. And so Tucker got, the judge said Tucker's a liar. We know that, right? You know, like you never lied. You're a lawyer. (laughs) But what about our election? I have a a question. I have a question. How come this is not thought of as being recruiting? How come? Recruiting. See, see, they want to make this into a crime. They're not thinking about like this as radicalizing. Right. radicalizing. Why isn't why why is this not being scrutinized the way that they scrutinize other yeah. uh, well, things? It, because to me, this is this should be against the law. You should not be you against the law. They want to make that you can't have a different opinion than the official story. The people who are paid liars and criminals, right? You can't have a different story than them. And again, whether you agree with this story or not, and I don't, I don't agree with either story. I don't agree with the Trumpers. Trumpers got rolled. Trumpers are, you know, their own special breed of idiot now, especially now. I mean, before, sure, I can understand why you like Trump. But after the way Trump got played and, you know, his Operation uh, Operation uh, Warp Speed and all that stuff with the Vax, Trump sucks. And if you don't understand that, like, you know, you're not really a truther. You got to understand, you know, Trump's culpability here. And so all elections are rigged. Like, I don't, you know, I don't care. I don't agree with it. Left, right paradigm stuff. But what she's calling for is people can no longer express an opinion that goes against the governmental opinion, even when you have video evidence that supports your opinion, right? Be able to lay, to lie to the American, knowingly. And, you know, it's one thing if you made a mistake and you didn't know. Knowingly lie. But we heard for five or six years how, you know, the media was yeah. lying, sack of do. Fake news. They were fake news. Yeah. They were this. So how come? What is the, what is our, what do we do as Americans to to say this is not okay. I You'd think have to say the First Amendment. Yeah. I think you, well, no. Well, but the I First think, Amendment doesn't, doesn't allow you to willingly the lie. That's their death. Willingly lie. He's not willing to lie. It's video evidence, right? You did not see the QME shaman being escorted around the premises by cops. Can I just say one thing? I think Tucker Carlson is more destructive to American political discourse than Donald Trump. And I think he's more powerful. Exactly. Woo! All destructive because they lie willingly. But then. Woo! You guys are not destructive at all because 
you're unwatchable, right? You have no influence over like, you know, the people watching you are, you know, close to being comatose in their inability for rational thought. Anybody watching The View and saying, wow, these gals get it, right? <laughs> this, just, I mean, this is a man who basically goes on his airwaves and says, you know, what would be so bad if Putin won or against Ukraine? Yeah, he says say insane that. things. Insane things like that. What would, what, you know, it would be insane for Putin to win. You know, when there's a contest, when there's a competition and there's a war and there's whatever it is, right? There can only be one side that wins, the evil empire, and that's us, right? If we don't, if, if we don't win all the time, then the world's, you know, like it's just the myopia here. He yes. pits Americans against each other, knowingly lying to them. And he's, even if it's not Trump, whoever the next Republican politician is, they're going to have to win the Tucker Carlson he's, he's primary. Just a, he's just an entertainer, though. He's not the news. The judge, the judge found that. But Whoopi, you, you just said something I don't think I've ever heard on no, rarely about about domestic terrorism. Yes, because you had the FBI director Chris Ray say the number. Okay, so these guys were dopes that they weren't coordinated. You know, come on, right? Come on now. I mean, even this is like sucky for even you guys. Bull. Boop. GOP senators rebuked Tucker Carlson for downplaying January 6th as mostly peaceful. This guy rebuking him. He's a rebuker. Let's hear this guy. Let's hear this rebuker here. Come on, rebuker. Rebuke Tucker Carlson in your rebuking ways. How do you feel about that? I think it's bull. I was here. It's bull. Boop. I was down there. He was here and down there. And I saw maybe a few tourists, a few people who got caught up in things. There are a couple tourists. There was actually some tourists. It's not complete bull boop. When you see police barricades breached, when you see police officers assaulted, all of that, or you had to be in close proximity to it, if you were just a tourist, you should have probably lined up at the visitor center and came in on an orderly basis. Yeah, it was an attack on the Capitol. I mean, he said it was not an insurrection. Was it an insurrection? Interview? Well, I don't know how you want to describe it. All I know is that uh, there were, yeah, there were a lot of people uh, in the Capitol at the time who uh, I think um, were scared for their lives. So uh, you can... I was one of them. You know, I pooped my pants. So let's be honest here. I, I can show you. That I got them. I saved them. It's like the green dress with <laughs> with Monica Lewinsky. I saved it just in case you guys need evidence. You know, however you want to describe it, but it was a uh, it was an attack on the Capitol. Exactly. You know. These guys, and we'll get to Tucker Carlson in a second. I just want to show you this. Here's Donald J. Trump. The title of this video is Jamie Raskin Rex Trump in Takedown of the Year. And look at this dude. Where do where the dude rag? Does he have cancer or something? Or like is he dropping like flies? What's going on with Jamie? Posted on Twitter, just finished a very good conversation with President Xi of China, discussed in great detail the coronavirus that is ravaging that is ravaging large parts of the planet. China has been through much and has developed a strong understanding of the virus. We are working closely together. Much respect. What do you say? Much respect to China? He's holding up Trump's tweet here. This guy wearing a do-rag, and he's giving a shout-out to China, and this is supposed to be a takedown? <laughs> this is where the Democrats are. Again, not a Republican, but this is where the Democrats are living right now. You have to ask yourself, why? Why is it so important? that they would degrade themselves by telling such obvious lies and calling for censorship. Why? Why? What are they trying to protect? That might what are they trying to protect? What are they hiding? Be worth exploring, and we plan to. And the second thing that we learned from this is that they're on the same side. The Senate Majority Leader joins the Senate Minority Leader. Tom Tillis, Mitt Romney. <laughs> they're Look, Tucker Carlson is whatever he is, right? And, you know, I wouldn't call him a truther, but he's definitely the most truther of all these people. And here he's talking about the right-left paradigm, which is a good thing, right? This is positive for whatever, you know, that means. They're all on the same side. So it's actually not about left and right. It's not about Republican and Democrat. Here you have people with shared interests, the open borders people. You know, you have people who are controlled and to what extent Tucker's controlled, I mean, he's on Fox News. But this is, you know, there's truth in this, you know, a, a lower level truth or truth. I'm going to talk about this in just a moment. The people, <laughs> the people like Mitch McConnell who are living in splendor on Chinese money. 
kaboom like that <laughs> kaboom right that's the that's the you know i mean they just lit him up right that's pretty brutal for mitch so here's the thing about this you know tucker carlson there was a video clip i showed and i don't know if somebody watched my channel that works for him or whatever it was or somebody else posted something similar but he had actually addressed this in one of his shows and it was to do with the big event in 2001 you know with the inside job people and somebody asked him a question about it and he was very mocking of the person come on come on he was saying right and i showed the clip you know as a way to show that you know his real uh, the way at least was before but he came out and actually apologized for that that he now is open-minded to or believes that, you know, the big event 2001 could be an inside job. And whether that's a character he's playing on TV, you know, he's chosen to go full truth or whatever it is, just in a performance level, whatever he's doing here, he's at least the most truther person of any of the people on the network news, right? He's the most, you know, and again, it's kind of coming from a right wing uh, standpoint, but I, you know, I don't think he's a Trumper. My wife said that he doesn't like Trump. We were talking about this this morning. And so in terms of the mainstream media, he's done something that is, again, you know, not deep level, deep dive truth or stuff, but, but certainly agrees with what we believe a lot more than, you know, this other stuff, right? And look at the reaction to it. Everybody coming out and saying he shouldn't be allowed to say these things. Every clip I showed you, except for the Republican senators that called bull, 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 bull boop on it, right? Everybody else said he should be censored and this should be criminal, right? I mean, this is where, you know, the ladies on the view, everyone else, that these words that he's saying, and they're saying he's lying on purpose. Well, I think he believes in it. And so do many of us. We don't believe in the official story. We believe you guys are the worst liars. Everybody lies, but you guys do it professionally. The media, the mainstream media, and the people who run the, the government, right? Now, I don't agree with the right-wing people. And, you know, I talk about how the QBs got worked and, you know, all of it, right? You know, it was a mistake. The, the right-wing certainly shouldn't have been doing what they're doing. A lot of the Tucker Carlson fans and these things. None of these things are important, though, because the system's collapsing, and that's the main lie that Tucker Carlson or no one else will tell you. Because the people running the system have the difficult issue of navigating the collapse. They are the ones in charge of it. And of course, they're going to look out for themselves and their loved ones and their families or whatever they do. I mean, they're reptilian in their ability. You know, they're not good people, but they have to deal with it. They know that the system is not sustainable. People say they're bringing down the system on purpose. And people have this view. The system sucks and it's demonic and it goes against God. We all know that. Deep down, you know that. That the system is, you know, not a system that aligns with God or nature. And it's not bringing out the best in human beings, right? We're becoming less and less moral. Our character qualities and our abilities and our, you know, we're getting crazier and crazier, weaker and weaker. I mean, we just, we're sucking right now. And the system's helping us suck, encouraging us to suck, right? I mean, if you accept that, like, you, it's, and that's a truth. We can, you know, I'm not going to prove it to you because the proof's, Every time you open your eyes and walk outside the door, or even when you look in the mirror, the, the proof of suckiness is right there. It's everywhere. Like, if you can't see it, you're just putting blinders on. And so, I mean, younger people, you know, it's all you know, but, you know, certainly people who are older have seen the de degradation of the human species knows that the system sucks and eventually has to collapse. And the economic system is, should have collapsed already. It's insolvent. And so all these things are there. And so the people running the system, they know if they tell everyone the system's collapsed, then it'll be chaos and it'll be, you know, it'll make it collapse even faster. As soon as people lose confidence in the system. So to keep the system going, they have to lie. Both sides. And I don't, you know, I'm not going to take their job. I don't want their job. You know, I have no interest in doing that job. And so, you know, they do whatever they do. That's their problem, right? Like for the rest of us that are aware the system sucks and we have our own way, our own way of dealing with it. We have to figure out our own path, you know, and that's, you know, whatever that is. Tucker Carlson, you know, isn't, certainly isn't there yet, 
but where he is is too much for the you know going outside the bandwidth of what's acceptable. I talked about this with Kyrie Irving versus John ja Morant. The worst thing you can do now is say that the system is lying and dispute the official narrative. And somebody, if you're a famous person and you have a big enough audience, you're you're considered an enemy because that's you know that'll make the system go even faster. If enough people believe in you and lose confidence in the system, a system that's a you know it's a it's a magical act, right? It's a it's a magic trick. It's a flim flam, you know, it's a flim flam scam. And so if you bring truth into there, then people lose confidence in the the illusion and the illusion collapses and then you know we're all booped. And so, you know, that's where we are. And when you know that, you can just enjoy what there's left to enjoy while you know making arrangements and plans for what you're going to do afterwards because you're 100% dependent on a system that's collapsing and there's nothing anybody can do about it, right? System can't be fixed in a way that would make it align with the divine current, right? It's just, you know, it's a it's a debauched system. But anyways, let's move on to our other stories. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here, you know, I make, I'm making these shorts here as well for the every other day. And I made like nine of them on my video yesterday on my other channel these are just epic days of you know stuff that's out there what i think i'm going to do here is i'll just cover this story and we'll get to kevin mccarthy of um uh you know the shark tank and then i have a couple great comments that just came in i want to address them and then um i'll cover the uh fetterman's wife's thing which is kind of big and feminist stuff on a separate day, I wanted to do it today because yesterday was the national whatever it was. And so in two days, I'll cover it. Same thing, though. What what difference does it make? But just in terms of time and, you know, those things are feature stories in themselves. Uh, and I want to talk about that in a different way. But let's get to this first here. Congressman says alien UFO tech is being reversed, engineered in secret. Recovered UFO technology may be being reversed engineered right now, but we don't understand how it functions, according to a U.S. representative. Tennessee Congress, Congressman Tim Burchett told Newsweek, this is Newsweek reporting this, and yet um, here's the guy here. And so that's huge news, right? Bigger than anything else, that there's aliens and they have technology that we don't understand, but we're trying to reverse engineer it. That's as big a story in the history of humankind, you know. But it's been going on for a while secretly because there used to be alien life here all the time. And maybe it was humans from another, you know, whatever they were. Maybe it was multiple different species, whatever. And the native peoples, the aboriginal people, you're used to it. There's all these cave paintings. I've covered this before. But this would be a huge story. But it's not because, you know, it's not ever going to be covered or taken seriously. And so it's not a legitimate story because they'll never admit this because it would, um, as soon as they admitted that there were aliens that were superior to what we can do, the loss in faith in our democracy, our government, our economic system, and the religions would collapse. People would say, well, if there's higher developed beings than us, then we're not the apex predator, predator, then everything would collapse. It's the belief that we're superior and that the institutions that we have are superior and our understanding of God is superior that makes the system run. And so let's get to this thing with Kevin McCarthy. I mean, Kevin O'Leary. I don't put companies here in New York anymore or in Massachusetts or in New Jersey or in California. Kaboom. So that's four very liberal PowerPoints, right? New York and New Jersey are the same thing. But also California. What was the other one? Massachusetts or in New Jersey or in, in Massachusetts. It's very, you know, much like New York. So these are liberal hotspots, old money places, and people are leaving them, especially after their COVID policies. People are moving to Texas from California and people are leaving New York like it's going out of style, right? I mean, New York is being abandoned by people. Uh, same thing with California, but, you know, in different ways. 
but it's the same thing. In California, those states are uninvestable. The policy here is insane. The taxes are too high. Now, again, this guy is, if you've ever seen his a debate with a young girl about how he wants Monsanto, which he's, you know, he's kind of the devil. But in terms of business, if he says your state is uninvestable, then it's uninvestable, right? <laughs> like, you know, I mean, there's, and we know that these places are failing. We put them in Fargo, North Dakota, mm. because 40% of the people work elsewhere, including Boston. So I was, you know, of a, a bit of a debate with Elizabeth Warren about this, but I say, look, Senator, we've got to move the companies out of your state because you're not investable anymore. You're punishing people if they're successful. You overtax them. You hit them with a super tax. New Jersey, what a mess. New York, uninvestable. In Wait, California. why is New York uninvestable? Try and do a project That's in New York. Try and build but a data. Yeah, I'm asking, Don's point, is it beyond the taxes? Oh, the regulatory environment is punitive. I had a project in upstate New York behind the grid in Niagara Falls for electricity, a global data center we were building. Eventually, it got so bad with the, po the politicians in the local region and the state policy, we moved it to Norway and all the jobs. Wow. Kaboom. Norway has it now. Thousands of jobs coming out of that. I mean, that is, that's New York. Uninvestable. Sorry, don't shoot the messenger. Just telling you the way it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Uninvestable. Some pushback from our, our elected officials in New York I on that. Gonna say yeah, because, you know, they're liars, right? I mean, she's really bad. Like, she's really stupid. I mean, she's sitting next to Don Levins, and she's got her own little brand of stupidity. Kathy Hochul. Yeah. But I'll debate it, them any time of the day you want. Uh, any, we would love to separate the AOC, watch that. She's great at killing jobs. She kills jobs by the thousands. You know, another New Jersey problem. Where did Amazon take their jobs? They took them away from her. She threatened to sue them if they created jobs. I mean, this is a reality. This is a reality that... The There's a little more to it, but let's not relitigate well, that. Well, you know, sorry. I'm just telling the truth. He's... A little more to that. Sorry. He's Canadian or something. Um, let's move to the narrative portion here. But uh, wait, Don Lemon says something here. He's saying what a lot of people are saying, especially what happened with that Amazon thing here in New York. Boom, well, even Don Lemon's had to agree with them, which is, you know, it's Don Lemon's. And so when a businessman, you know, somebody who's all about the money, right, again, celebrity figure, whatever it is, says your state's uninvestable and people are fleeing your state and all their abusive um, COVID policies. I mean, New York and California were the worst, right, on every level. And so there's something going on. Your two most populated states are becoming... You know, uh, I mean, people don't want to live there. If you make a lot of money, you don't want to live there because of the taxes. If you're in the middle class, you don't want to live there because of the crime. So it's like escape from New York and escape from California, these places that will just be, you know, poor-driven places, right? I mean, there's all these punitive type of, um, that's what he was, Kevin McCarthy was calling it, punitive type of uh, regulations. But in terms of, the people who live there, it's like you're punishing your citizens for living there and they can go to move to somewhere else or your company or your business. You can move somewhere else and it's warmer and better. I mean, California has its advantages, but New York is a cold, dirty city that's hard to drive around with potholes that are like four feet deep. I mean, it's just brutal. Like if places breaking down the infrastructure, I mean, New York's days are behind them. It's just a pit. Okay, so I got a couple of epic comments here. Um, I think I want to read this one first. And this one was Chris Rock's Netflix special, Tucker Carlson, The QB Shaman and Reincarnation. So I guess he's responding to reincarnation at the end of the video. This guy is, right? And there's another comment. There's a few comments that were pro QB. I guess there's some QBs that are still out there who maybe they feel validated by this Tucker Carlson thing. They shouldn't, <laughs> you know, the kill cube Q thing. It's embarrassing, right? It's something you want to put behind you. Like, you know, a tattoo that you, that you got when you were drunk and you have to get it lasered off. Like it's, that's, <laughs> if you're a QB, you're trying to remove the scarlet Q from your, from your, you know, branding. Uh, but anyways, I'll get to that. Well, something I think that comes from a QB. There's another comment I didn't keep, um, but you know, the QBs, a few of them showed up. 
But here, and someone said that the um, the what you call it shaman is sexy, and so um, it says this: this guy is clueless on Christianity and about Jesus or even the God of the Bible. Jesus or Scripture never taught about reincarnation. Well, you, again, you did not understand my point. You're calling me clueless, but I made a valid point, which is the Bible has been edited and things have been taken out and things have been changed. Things have been removed. Jesus believed in reincarnation at that time, you know, as did so many people around that area. That's what people believe there, right? And so it's been something that, again, is a control mechanism in your religion. And I wouldn't go to your channel or your channels you watch that has Christians on it and say these things because wherever you are in your spiritual process is where you are and I'm fine with it but this is my channel MNF and this is what I talk about and if it's above your pay grade then that's not my problem right if you can't conceptualize these things yeah sure go back to those channels that tell you what you what your that your indoctrination that you received is correct but if you want the truth then you have to expand your consciousness and be able to understand what people are saying, right? Like you're already saying I'm clueless, but you don't understand what I'm saying, so why are you commenting on it, right? Again, I'm not offended, but your stupidity and your lack of ability to comprehend what's going on around you is, you know, why, why are you burdening me, me, me with it, right? He says, when he mentions hell, hell is not opened up yet. The unsaved will be cast into hell. After the day of judgment, reason why is because God is holy. This Paul guy makes up his own version of God. Well, that's what every religion does. I don't know God, and neither do you. Like, we can feel God, but God's beyond our comprehension. And so if you think your book tells you, your religion tells you, and that you get it or other people get it, you're, you're trying to understand. You're working towards understanding and the ways of God, and you'll never fully do that in the human body. We're too limited, right? But you can feel God's love and you can follow your soul's path and you can make the right decisions and you can learn more more about God and the ways of the divin of divinity. But this idea that you think you know it, it's just, you know, you don't, right? It's God is infinite. God covers the whole universe. There's no uh, me mechanical device that you could create on earth that would have all the information about God, just about God on earth. Everything on earth has God in it. So God is everything and everywhere. And so your ability to comprehend that, especially, you know, given this comment, right? I mean, you're, you know, you're on the Dick and Jane, you're like on, a, um, you know, the Dr. Zeus level, uh, good night moon, you know, board book level of understanding God, right? Flesh and blood, sinful humans, cannot in inherit the kingdom of God because of the cross. Jesus, these are all symbols, right? These are all symbols that have been embedded into your head, into your, you know, your etheric, um, not your head, your etheric, uh, you know, your, your psyche, right? You know, the cross, the kingdom of God. These are all things that they've th thrown at you to think that you, you know, you know stuff. It's symbols and, you know, it's concepts instead of understanding the true, abstract nature of the divine and feeling God's love. Because of the cross, Jesus took the punishment for the sins in his body and shed his blood for the sins a person commits, comments, person writes comments, comments in their bodies, he means commits, during their life on earth. This is all by faith. Well, I told you that that's not possible. And you, you know, again, you've heard the, the other thing your whole life. Now you hear something new from me. It's impossible for someone to die for somebody else's sins. You have to take responsibility for your actions. You have to wear them off. So you could, they can help you. Jesus could help you. Jesus could help you clean away your, you know, your grossness like is done in the Sajmar meditation system. But even the cross is a great symbol. You know, your cross to bear. Your sins are your cross to bear, right? That's, you know, it's a great analogy. It's not Jesus's. Jesus can't die for people's sins a million years from now. It's just stupid. It's a deal you think you're getting, and now that I've told you you're not getting it, you're bummed, you know, because you stumbled on my channel and you're here. But again, 
go to some place where they're going to tell you something op- the opposite and they'll make you feel good until, you know, at some point you realize, hey, I got duped, you know, because someone can't die for your sins. A person is saved by the grace through faith. No other religion deals with sin. They all do, right? <laughs> I mean, they all do. They all have these promises they make. They all, you know, it's the same stuff. It's a scam, right? They're all running the same scam. The cross saves the soul. The cross does. The symbol of the cross. It saves the soul. Something physical, right? Jesus' death is physical. And, you know, he was, I mean, to go back to the to heaven or what we call the brighter world is a gift. I mean, it's hard on earth, right? We don't want to leave and we want to survive, but when our souls leave, our souls are happy. The cross saved the soul and paid the sin debt that man owes to holy God. He, he paid your sin debt with the cross. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, think about it from, like, if you never grew up in Christianity and you heard this thing, like, it's just a, a scam. Like, some, think about if Joe Biden was trying to sell you this thing. You wouldn't believe it, right? Faith is what God has said and has done. Paul, Paul really needs Jesus and should read the Bible. He does a poor job of trying to explain and represent Christianity, the Bible, and the Holy God. Well, I'm explaining it in a way that you don't like. Right? I'm explaining the way that, you know, that it's deceptive and that you've been lied to and you don't like it. Like, you know, I could be wrong and maybe I am about some of it, but you're not right. Like you're you, like I might not get the exact thing right, but your position, what you've been told is a lie. Right. It's a manipulative lie by a religion that's blocking your connection to God. And again, you know, don't watch my videos. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to to dispute your faith or whatever, and that's something that we're not supposed to do in Saj Marg. I'm not going to your religion. I'm not going to your pastor. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not preaching against Christianity. I like Christians, and, I, you know, I have a lot of great Christian viewers here. It's nothing, and, and my own experience with Jesus is a good one. I grew up a Catholic. I had wonderful experiences, prayer meetings. People prayed for me my mom and nuns and, you know, I mean, I, you know, I have nothing but great, you know, uh, uh, gratitude for the Christians that uh, created the homeschooling networks. And I'm glad that I live in a country where there's people who believe in God, right? I mean, I'd rather live here with Christianity than live in China with nothing, right? And so I'm not mad at the Christians, but I just, you know, I'm telling you what's wrong with it, man, what's wrong with these things. It's like I do everything else here. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not anti-Jesus or, or Christianity. It's just what you've been told is a lie. And so then there was this other comment. I think this is it here. And, um, uh, and I'll get to this one last because it's funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> then there was this one. Um, y'all, well, this is not the one I want to get to. Y'all, that still, th- that's, y'all, that still th- thinks this stuff that Paul covers, y'all that still thinks this stuff that Paul covers is real life, Yahshua bless you. What does it even mean? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'd say it's all an illusion, but whatever. Yahshua is Jesus' real name. And at least some people believe that. I don't, I don't know. I believe it may be possible. I don't know. So here's a comment. I, I didn't take a picture of it, but I left it up. I didn't ban the person because it's not really hostile. Um, it's a long comment. That's why I didn't take a screenshot of it, but I'll, I'll go through it anyway. Hey, Paul, you said that the system is a reflection of us in it. What about the majority of us and our parents who voted for values and morals and people we voted in light, in light us, and they doubled down, tripled down, and, and it just kept on getting worse, and then people stuck their head in the ground while those of us who are still living a life based on Amaro's values face, etc. So tell me, how are we responsible for this crap? Um, that's just the beginning. This is long. Now, it's not very well worded, but, you know, I think the person's trying to say here that you believe you're voting for the right people, which you're not, and that you're living a good life. Well, you might be living a good life, but your system that you're dependent on is hurting people in nature all around you. All of us are. We're supporting a system that's hurting other people. It's enslaving people around the world to make our cell phones, 
if you went through all the products, you enjoy all these things. And also the right wing Christian conservatives, you guys created the, the anger, the way that you feel about liberals right now, the liberals have felt about you, you know, people of color, gay people, they've all felt about you the same way that you feel about them, the woke culture and all these things. And so, you know, in old, in olden years, uh, you know, not old years, the, the make a great American grand years, that's the way they felt about you. And that's what fueled their hatred and resentment and desire to topple your regime, right? You're, and now they've turned, the people with the power have turned on you. But, you know, you have to figure out how you've contributed, right? But we all have because it's a dysfunctional system. And, you know, there's good, honest people, but usually they don't write comments, you know, <laughs> like this. I mean, there's people who salted the earth people, good people who, you know, who behave in a, you know, they develop good character qualities, whatever. But usually those people don't ask questions like this or write comments because they are always looking at themselves in a, a way that they're trying to take personal responsibility and you're not, right? So your comment is, you're asking me to prove to you that you're responsible. Why don't you prove this to yourself? Like, why don't you take a look at yourself and how you contributed? And, you know, the thing about me is, like, I know I'm an a-hole, right? I know I'm a poop hole right? I know I, you know, I say mean things. I know I'm crazy. You know, I know the things that I do here. And I know the behaviors. I don't try to rationalize them. Like I say all the time that I, I had to dive into the, the cesspit because that's where people reside. I don't care about politics. I don't care about celebrities, you know, all these things. And so mocking them is, you know, what I ended up having to do. I'm good at it. It's a defense mechanism. It keeps me, you know, sane in this Seth spit that I dive into every day. And I have to dive into it because that's where the majority of people are. And just talking about the higher things I talk about here, nobody would watch the channel, practically nobody. And you can see that in my videos, the ones that I talk about more refined concepts. It goes over people's heads or they're just not interested in it. They want dirt. They want slime, whatever. And so that's a sacrifice for me to dive into the cesspit. But I enjoy mocking people. I'm not going to pretend that's not true when I'm good at it. And so, you know, but it's not a higher developed behavior. And so that's the difference, right? I understand that, you know, there's things that I have to engage in. There's behaviors. There's things that, that I enjoy or preferences that aren't, you know, a, a reflection of my soul or my higher nature. And I'm aware of it. I'm not trying to pretend it isn't this case. I'm not in denial like this person is so many people are. Um, the more I look at this, this is a bannable con comment. And then the person says, um, so tell me how we are responsible for this crap. I'm not perfect by no means. Every day I ask God to help me do better. Well, right there. I focus on the Ten Commandments and the Beatitudes. Okay. <laughs> um, if you can get some of them right every day and grow and be like Jesus every day, that's my prayer. You will know them by their faults. Well, that's negative, but that's, you know, you should look at the positive, but that's whatever. The shift of fools was not the fruits we voted for. So my question to you is, how do we battle that? Well, no one said you should battle it. I keep on saying the system has gone south. Some things you have to let go. And then there has to be something better after this system collapses. I mean, you know, you don't watch my videos or you don't understand them. I think Jesus said it all that each day we have to pick up our cross and take it one day at a time. Love your neighbor, serve people, serve your community, and bring heaven to earth and try to do that every day. You know, I guess that's some way kind of what I say here. You know, of course, that's looking at it through the eyes of your religion. Peace, I don't believe that we, plus I think the person said, Matt, peace, I don't believe, that someone, they probably... um use their, you know, their voice to text. Peace, I don't believe that we deserve this. Some of us like what's currently going on in the world. I don't know. I, I, I neither does my family, the elders in my family. So I can always speak from my perspective. And we did not vote for this. Stop talking about voting. <laughs> they let us, they lied. They were deceitful. They're still deceitful. And they continue to control the narratives I am plug. I am plug for them. I should say I am unplugged from them. 
a long time ago when I just focused on 60 seconds of me and take it one day at a time, peace for all humanity. Well, the part where you say here, um, I don't believe we deserve some of like this was currently going on. Well, if you believe in God and you have faith, then everything that you receive in life and everything that's going on is coming from God. That's how you should look at the world. They're what you look at the world. And you have to accept the things, even, you know, this idea of deserving or not, if it's happening, you deserve it, if you really believe in God. There's one epic comment I want to get to, but first I want to show you the short that leads to the comment. I got my SAG card when I was 19 years old. Looks like you got your SAG card pretty recently. <laughs> so that was a little tongue and cheek, you know, joke um, <laughs> that I made spontane spontaneously, right? Um, that was, you know, it wasn't meant to be that serious. Uh, and I made it into a short because it's funny, right? And this person writes, hey, dude, let's see your saggy balls. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Did someone just ask to see my saggy balls? Do you want to see my saggy? Like, what is um wrong with you that that's what you would say, right? And I understand you're trying to, you know, I mean, it's a joke. I laugh, so I guess, you know, you accomplished a joke there. But the difference is, Jamie Lee Curtis is displaying her sag right in front of everybody. I'm not up there, you know, doing that. Like, I'm not advertising or, like, you know, using that as a selling point. I mean, <laughs> that is obviously a difference here. But you wrote a comment in which you requested to see something that, you know, nobody needs to be seeing. Uh, but anyways, only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramano, definitely reporting for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.